get us started. No, we didn't. So, hi, this is Coach World TV. I'm Laurie Lawson, and tonight my guest is finally, I've been trying to get her on for two to three years, I know, Lisa Michelle Couchard. How you doing? I'm well, thank you. I really appreciate being here. I'm very uh, happy to be here. And I'm sorry that I did have you <laughs> wait for quite some years. time. Yeah, hey. Um, but it's my right. pleasure to be with you here. We love you anyway. Thank you. Lisa Michelle is a career, business, and work-life balance. Did I do that right? You did. Right. Career coach. I mean, coach. <laughs> <laughs> one, one extra career. And, I, and in talking to her, I realized that... Um, she kind of uses her own life as inspiration, and I, I love that because, it's, well, here's what I need. I assume everybody else needs this. We're good. She's got all kinds of cool programs going. I have to tell you, I first met her, and we didn't even talk about this, um, with the United States Empowerment Society, or the Empowerment Society of the United States yes, or something. Yes. We were both volunteering to do some coaching for um, military females that were being deployed back into the United States. And yes. We went up to West Point on we a wild did. trip. That's when we <laughs> met on our trip to West Point. And that's been so long ago. I yes. think it's been longer than three yeah, years. Actually, <laughs> I was going to say, I think it's now more like I'm thinking four about it, I think I had, to be, right. I had to ask her forever. But anyway, she's here now, so we're going to take advantage of that. Tell us, first of all, Sure. she's got great programs. One is called Ace the Race. One is called I Love Mondays. One is called The 40s Factor. It used to be Countdown. To, I mean, she's uh, titles she's really good at. <laughs> and the programs, she can back it up also. But tell us, what made you decide to get into coaching first time? Um, well, at first, people approached me, people who I had met through uh, my profession or um, through uh, acquaintances, and would recommend to me that I should be a coach. And I couldn't understand why other Did people- Did you know what a coach was? I didn't. <laughs> no. I didn't know what a coach was. And when I found out what a coach was, I couldn't understand why people thought I should coach other people, right? I didn't think that I had the years of life experience or career experience <laughs> yet. Um, we're talking more than 15 years ago. Mm. Um, and people would try to explain to me um, that um, it's a technique, it's certain natural abilities, certain things could be learned, but perhaps um, other things are just natural to someone. Um, if you're a natural motivator, if you can help people focus, if you can help people um, work through their clutter without putting your own thoughts on them, that those were all good qualities to become a coach. And somehow they thought, they, in dealing with you, they thought that you had those qualifications. Yes. Um, you know, when I was working um, in HR and marketing and bringing those skills together, mm -hmm. um, that's when I would um, get most of those comments. Uh, it was very interesting, and I, I put it on the back burner like many people do in life. <laughs> so as you're saying, you know, you use your own life as inspiration. And about six years ago, when I was thinking about, you know, my future, um, what do I love to do? How do I love Mondays? How can I help other people um, have a good career journey, find that work-life balance? Um, I turn to coaching. Well, we are thrilled that you do because Thank she's you. got really great things going on. What, what program came first for you? Do you mean like uh, Ace the Race? Or, or Countdown to 40, which was so the So Ace first the one? Race was um, my first venture, uh, my first official company. And um, I really wanted to help people who are highly motivated, and we talked a little bit about that, mm -hmm. and I can get into that, um, ace the race. And by the race, I mean their race, because that race is different for every person. Mm -hmm. So for some person, it's a career path and how to get from point A to B and do it successfully um, and possibly happily. <laughs> um, for other people, it's starting a business. For other people, it's um, finding a part-time position so that they can have a certain type of work-life balance. Mm -hmm. So when one aces the race, it's to be an ace in your own personal race, but mostly focusing on career and business. Now, is that making the assumption that we are all in a race and... So it is. And, and that personalizing is. the race, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> it is, and I guess that's where... Um, part of my life journey comes in it as well. Mm -hmm. um, I do feel that um, when it comes to career and business, we are all in some type of race, um, especially perhaps in a New York environment. Um, no, no matter what you're going through, you're competing with others, you're competing with yourself, you're competing with your own interests, 
and um, you want to go as far as you can go or today as you want to go. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm thinking as we're talking about the title that one might say, oh my God, I don't want to be in a race. I want to, you know, go to the mountains and <laughs> meditate. But in, in, in a career, I think it's almost essential that you are moving in some direction. It Absolutely. may not be a monetary direction. It could be a fulfillment direction. Right. It could be an educational. But right. I, because I, I'm going, ace the race. What if people don't want to race? But I got what you're saying right. now. Right. Yeah. So the race is, is unique as the individual. So if the person wants to go to the mountains and meditate, and that's a priority for the person, then that becomes part of the person's race. Perfect. Perfect. So how do they ace that mm -hmm. and still um, support themselves and perhaps others and make <laughs> it all work? And that's, that's what you've taken on to do, huh? Yes. All right, so what do, what do you tell people now that would make them get a whole new perspective on what they're doing. I mean, what, what are some of the advice? And we don't give advice. <laughs> what, are the, <laughs> what are some of the action steps right. that they should be taking? So first, um, usually I start off in finding out um, why perhaps somebody wants to make a change and if they mm -hmm. actually know they want to make a change. I'm sorry. You know what? I want you to tell me what highly motivated people are. Because you just made me remember. That, she, that okay. made me remember what right. she had said. And she did say she only wants to work with highly motivated people. So what does that mean? So I only want to work with highly motivated people because I only work well with highly motivated people. So okay. it's something that I know about myself <laughs> and I want to um, do justice for my clients. So... Um, what is a highly motivated exactly. person? Exactly. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> uh, a highly motivated person is someone who is going to work at whatever it is that they want to go through, make an active effort, be ambitious about it, um, make a plan, stick to the plan, adjust the plan, but really be active in their change. Okay. They aren't looking for someone just to talk to but not make any changes. Mm, it's not a venting It's uh, not, thing. yeah. <laughs> it, it, you know what? You Venting's good. But venting's <laughs> good. It has its place. Um, but I work with people who really want to move. Now we've talked about it. Is that move forward? Is that move lateral? Mm -hmm. Is that downgrade to happiness? But the person needs to want to make a change. I know I'm going to make her explain that. But what, first, I want to ask a question. Does that exclude someone who calls you up and goes, you know what, I'm miserable, but I know I need to make a change, but I don't have a clue? Does, do, do they need to have a clue, or do no, you help them need, get a clue? They don't need to have a clue <laughs> to be highly motivated. So okay. it doesn't exclude the person. But I do let people know up front what's involved in working with me. So it's not just, you know, attending a phone call or a face-to-face -face mm -hmm. meeting and not doing anything else. So if, and I do get calls from people who say, hi, Lisa, I'm miserable. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they're usually uh, miserable um, in their jobs, in their careers, or in business. Um, and I do work with people to help them figure out either why they're miserable um, or if there are certain pinpointed areas that they're miserable that perhaps they can make a small change mm -hmm. without having to make a monumental change and release some of that misery and step into more happiness. And if they don't really know which direction they should take, that's why you're there. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, Absolutely. so don't, don't discount the, her services because she said you, you know, you have to be highly motivated. You can be highly motivated but not have a clue where Absolutely. you're going. It's a all right. Lot of people <laughs> fall into that. Um, you know, um, they go through stages in life mm -hmm. and they get to a point where they're recognizing that they're unhappy or, or perhaps miserable <laughs> if it goes to that extent. Somewhere within and that. They, they are, their minds are so filled with what we call clutter. Mm -hmm. They m are probably not referring to it as clutter because they don't recognize it, but they, they can't pinpoint what changed, um, whether it's about a place of work or about themselves, that now has led them to be unhappy. We're going to talk about all the changes that have come about. But you did mention something about downgrade to happiness. Why would happiness be a downgrade? Explain that. Right. So um, if we're not downgrading the happiness part. 
Okay. Because the happiness is um, really an elevated aspect of our lives, and, and people, I believe, should seek happiness. Um, but perhaps some people can downgrade certain aspects of their career and business um, that they didn't think that they were going to do in the past. So they thought that for their career to be successful, they had to make a continual progression upward or at least laterally, mm -hmm. um, but that they reach a point where they understand that that continual progression isn't what's going to help them be happy, whether they're not happy now or they won't be happy at the next step. Mm -hmm. um, and there are trade-offs and there are decisions. And we all have the opportunity to make those choices. Okay. So um, one can um, change an aspect of one's career and um, downgrade the career to a better, happier life. So you're saying rather than be on the career ladder, they yes. might say, you know what, I'm at level six and yep. I'm going to stay there because I like it here. Absolutely. And I'm tired of climbing the ladder. Right. And I may take a step down the ladder, mm. whether that's continual step down. I was really happy at level five. Exactly. Yeah. And, and now I'm just miserable at level six <laughs> or level seven. I don't want to go on. I to seven, like yeah. the additional money or I like the prestige, but I don't really need it because I'm just not happy. Mm -hmm. I don't like the additional stress. I'm not happy. So in, in a sense, what you do is help people get their priorities straight. And, Absolutely. And it's funny because I have friends who are 100% money motivated right now that is not a motivator for me right. and that's okay uh, I think and then they're always going how right. could you not care right. and I, it's not that I don't care right. it's just right. not my top priority right. so uh, it, it, maybe getting helping them prioritize what exactly. is important now how frivolous is it in today's economy to worry about happy who cares if you're happy you're employed right. shut up and, and don't mess it up right, right. <laughs> so that's a very good question <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, you know what? Some people would call it frivolous. Say, you know what? Happy doesn't come in my budget right now. Mm, so okay. let's not talk about <laughs> I don't happiness. Have a happy budget. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I need to make X amount of dollars, um, and I will do whatever it takes to make that. We'll talk about happy when the economy approves. And and I accept that that is some people's approach. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, I do challenge people to take a look at that. How much money do you need? How much money do you want? Do you want that continual progression in salary? Some people do. Some people will not be happy without that. That's their happiness exactly. ticket. But if you're content with your salary, or you could possibly be content at one level less of your salary, and that could um, buy you, because it buys you uh, leaving the office earlier, or an evening that you can go watch uh, your child's baseball game, or a night out with the ladies, it's a trade-off. Mm -hmm. So, and it could be a sacrifice. I mean, you could say, absolutely. okay, three days a week I'm going to bring my lunch instead absolutely. of eating out and spending $20. That's exactly right? what I find people are doing. Really? I, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Good, so I good. won't go um, for the ladies. I won't go get a manicure, pedicure every week. Mm -hmm. I'll do it every other week. It's just another example like the lunch. Yeah, yeah. You know, I do find that more people are bringing lunch in the city. Yeah. Right. So that's a trade off. Um, okay. But, um, you know, one doesn't have to feel like it's either happiness or a salary. Because as we've discussed before, you don't get what you don't ask for. And I've learned... Um, That's a hard lesson that I keep trying to learn. Uh, yeah, it's, but it's tough. Um, you know, and it's easy for me to talk about it. I, I witnessed it um, firsthand, but for other people for years. And only in recent years have I felt comfortable to push myself to make the requests as well, but you, Do you don't mind ask. telling us, like, just give us, an, and you could just if this could this could or could not be her own personal. Absolutely. But what are some things that you could ask for uh, that you you know that might make you happy without getting a higher salary? Right. So um, something that someone could ask for is flex time, and flex time could be um, working the same hours but working from home, like telecommuting. Um, it could be if an office was generally open from, we'll call it nine to five, although who knows that office <laughs> I anymore. Think those are dead hours and, yeah. and, and people, you know, are used to that office operating 8.30 to 5.30 to 6, you know, saying, you know what, I'm not looking to l work less hours, but mm. can I work seven to three, one day a week, mm. right? Everyone knows if you're a good employee, you're going to make sure your work is done. 
I know some companies that allow you to work uh, 10 hours a day and then you get Friday Absolutely. off. Absolutely, right. And it's like, okay. And <laughs> some companies don't have official policies like that, but if someone requests it, they say, sure. You know what, we didn't think of it, but you know, you're a good employee, we know your work is done, right? Because that's always going to be the um, prerequisite. Absolutely. I mean, you if have you come to make in sure every day. Exactly. <laughs> You're not getting anything. <laughs> and right. if you got all, you use all right. your sick leave. Don't Absolutely. ask. Exactly. You've already got your bonus. Right. Then, yeah. then, then you you didn't earn the right. request. Right. Um, but at the same time, um, if you're looking for a new position, that's a great opportunity to make requests. Right. So you oh, want to yeah. work um, yeah. till four o'clock once a week um, during little league season because you want to make you know your son or daughter's baseball game. Mm -hmm. Talk about it on the interview. I find that more and more today people are getting what they ask for as long as you don't ask for something outlandish or ridiculous. Right. Why do you think in today's market where we know there are thousands of applications for one? one job, um, why do you think employers are being accommodating? I mean, they really could just be tyrants and go, oh no, these are the rules and... and you know, I, I'm sure that there are, there's a whole spectrum mm -hmm. of employers yeah, and just, how they behave. Yeah. Um, I think that uh, many employers are being accommodating today because they know that a happy, satisfied employee is a better employee, is mm -hmm. a more dedicated employee. Uh, will do a better job, will stay longer in the position and at that job, and that's worth a lot to an employer. Well, you have to, yes, and, and you would think, okay, who cares if employees are a dime a dozen, but you have to remember the process of getting oh. the right employee, because we've both been in personnel Absolutely. and human resources, like, oh, no, not another interview, right. not another orientation. Position to fill and the orientation <laughs> and, and the, the training. And, and the and recruitment and, right. and it goes on and on. Absolutely. So I think employers are realizing that that's a waste of their time too. If, if waste they of could, time where and, they could and money. Actually, they can count the dollars Absolutely. today. Absolutely. And they do. Right. <laughs> they yes, they do. do. They do. Yes, yes. So if you have a proven track record at a previous place of employment and this uh, prospective place of employment is interested in you, don't be ridiculous because mm -hmm. if you are ridiculous then that will close a door but yes. ask for something reasonable you you may get it and I, I find that a notion that I almost want to test out but I'm happy doing what I'm doing so I'm not going to but I'd right. love to see and I, it's something that I have to remember too because I'll just in my head I'll, oh no no that's not possible and right. I'll forget about it right. and it's like how do I know until I ask so right. It's a good, I know we all need to do mantras to remind Absolutely. ourselves that, you know what? If you don't ask, you don't get. So. Absolutely. I love that. Now, let's talk about the totally insane program of I Love Mondays. What is that all about? <laughs> okay, so I believe, <laughs> go ahead, laugh all you want. I believe that people can love Mondays. Okay. Or at least not hate them as much, <laughs> as, much. as we've talked about. <laughs> all right. Um, and I developed a program. Um, that can be done one-on-one -on -one or in a group. Um, in a group, it's about a six-part series. It usually takes about two months, and one-on-one, -on -one, it varies all on the individual, uh, where we get to the heart of what is the best place, that ideal career and position for a person so that not only Monday morning, but Sunday evening and afternoon. You're all excited. <laughs> they're looking forward to going to work, or at least mm. not dreading it. Um, and the program isn't just, well, what job do you have now? What job do you want? Because that would be too easy. Right. Sure. If, if that was the case, people would be doing it. Right. But it's really helping people get in touch with what is it about work do they like and do they love? And I, I go on a complete uh, journey with a person from what did you like the best about the place of employment you liked the least. That says a lot. Mm -hmm. If you can figure out what did you actually like at that one job that you didn't like to have in your life, mm -hmm. that really helps you get in touch with what did you not like at all about a place of employment that you loved. Oh, okay. Right? So yeah. this just yeah. helps you get your wheels um, turning. Um, would you work outdoors? Do you like working in an office? Would you travel? 
all these questions uh, we talked before about um, are you willing or can you work on a commission based salary? Mm. Right. right there, there's about a hundred questions to get someone to start to think before they start doing what I call an inventory of you. Mm -hmm. You know, what are your strengths? If you could possess a new talent, what would it be? What talents do you have that you're not utilizing right now? And then helping someone bring it all together. Now, is this to create job satisfaction where they currently are or to define the perfect job? Okay, so. <laughs> Usually, people start off thinking that they need to leave where they are. Always, yeah. Right? They, <laughs> they do, right? Place, I gotta exactly. go. Exactly. They, they start off thinking, I, I'm here and I'm not happy. I don't know why I'm not happy. I need to leave <laughs> this place because happiness is elsewhere. Right. right? If it's that the grass is always greener or something else, I don't know. Over there. Right, yeah. exactly. <laughs> um, but often, I find that... Um, during the process, people realize, they, ca they can really conceptualize what is it about this place or something surrounding working at this place mm -hmm. that's not sitting well with them. And then we go through the process of, of saying, well, can you ignore this? Can you accept this? Can you make a change for that one thing and stay at your place and then be happy? Mm. And often people can do that. They just haven't. They just assume it's right. not going to be right. there. I often find um, in our society that you know we we live in a, in a world of um, people who like to complain, <laughs> right? So whiners, yeah. whiners, exactly. <laughs> whiners. And I don't want to <laughs> peg people, but you know, if if someone's surrounded by complainers and they all talk about being miserable in their job, or is it now like you know an infection? It's, it's contagious. A employment culture, you know, yeah. it's just, just the culture so, of the business. You know, yeah. we help people. Is that what's going on? Are you mm -hmm. really unhappy? And or can you be the one who comes to work with a smile on your face on Monday morning? You'll be the only one, but it's okay. <laughs> and then maybe that smile can spread. It'll be contagious. But I think it's also, and I, and I like that you say we do live in that kind of culture we because do. also I think. We, we have a tendency to think, well, it can't be my responsibility, so it's the next job. And, Absolutely. And that will make me happy. That's Whereas true. At least, and even if you do say, I hate this, and the person tries to change it, and it doesn't work, mm -hmm. at least they've tried. Right. So then you know you've exhausted the possibilities, right. and you can move on to right. what you might think. But if you haven't tried, you're going to... People What's that saying? Wherever you go, there you are. It's exactly. like <laughs> wherever you people go, there you are. People are very hesitant to make an effort to change where they're at. And I think that's both mm -hmm. in their professional and personal lives. Yeah. I think it's so. easier to walk up and away and leave than to try to make a change. Witness the divorce rate in America, which Absolutely. is insane. Yes. It's like it's you like know fifty percent or something. Yeah. Right? yeah. Uh, over, 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 I think now. Which is sad. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I, so great, good yeah, for you. So, yeah. the, so the premise behind I hate Monday, I, I love Mondays. Sorry, I'm That's so okay. used to the culture. <laughs> I, I love Mondays. Is is that let's let's find out, let's make you love Mondays, right. <laughs> or at least not hate right. them as much as you used to. You know what? And for some people, it's the realization that no matter where I'm going to be, I'm going to complain about my job. Yes, yes, some people are. And th Not and everyone, that's, but that's... That's, their, that's comfortable and, for them. And <laughs> that sometimes, once they realize that, that helps them. Because yeah. now they can stop expecting to love their job. Yeah, and we just, oh, okay, this is normal, and right. I can live in normal. Well, tell us about uh, it, what started out to be Countdown to 40. I just love her titles. Countdown to 40, and now is The 40 Factor. What was that? Because I know <coughs> she's a fantastic writer, and I Thank know she you. has this really cool blog going on, so I want you to all know about that. Thank so you. you can, I appreciate uh, <laughs> it. So you can know where to tune in. <laughs> so I noticed um, when I was 38 and 39, <laughs> a lot of my friends, friends and family who turned 40 before me went through all sorts of things. Um, and some of the things weren't so positive. Um, you know, I don't think we call them exactly midlife crises anymore. Some of them could have been defined that way. And I found that I wasn't going through that, which I was very grateful for, um, but that I was definitely going through something because I was about to approach this new number, mm. 40. It, it has this like prestige and, and this monumental impact yes, for us. Yes. 
And um, I decided that I was going to launch a blog called Countdown to 40 because I had no idea what I was going to go through. Was I going to have a midlife crisis? <laughs> was I going to be okay? Am I for the midlife exactly. crisis? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, so I named it Countdown to 40. And for the six months leading up to my 40th birthday, um, I blogged on everything and anything that I was going through in life. Um, and I really, I think you may know this, I really thought that I was going to end it there. It was going to be countdown to 40. I was going to turn 40. I was going to do my um, philanthropy <laughs> project, have a few parties, and it's I'd over. be done. <laughs> and um, I got a lot of encouragement from people, some who I knew and some who I had never met, who thought it was really important to keep the conversation going, to talk about things that people um, in our age group were going through. Um, and grow together, and that's when the 40 factor was born. So we're carrying it on. We are. Maybe we'll have something for 50. Who knows? <laughs> you know, when I was finishing up Countdown to 40, uh, several people suggested that I start Countdown to 50. Oh my gosh! Not and 10 I said, years. I'm that's not too much. ready for that yet. But <laughs> no, thank enjoy you. enjoy the 40s right exactly. now. Exactly. Well, tell them because you've got so much going on. Tell them where they can find you because you've got a couple of websites, I think. But where, where's the best place to find you? The best place to find me is at AceTheRace.com. Um, all of uh, the other information is there as well. Okay. Um, and it really is just as it's spelled with no hyphens or anything, acetherace.com. Um, all my Twitter names are there <laughs> and my Facebook pages. Uh, you know, I'm really enjoying the social media um, yes, and sharing with people that's that how way. I kept up with her for the four years when I'm going, are you ready to come on now? <laughs> and then finally she goes, I think I am. So what if, if they go to your website, what are they going to find that might be helpful to them? Like That's a great question. Because um, it's not all about me. Really? <laughs> yeah. Uh, don't tell me that. Um, oh, <laughs> so one of the things that um, you can find on acetherace.com are articles um, about updating your resume, oh, networking, cool. different approaches to networking, um, loving Mondays. Um, 40 factor. 40 factor, <laughs> turning a job search into a job hunt. Oh, which nice. is something yeah. that I try to promote, um, not to be passive in a job search, but to actually hunt down the job that you want. Highly motivated, yes. <laughs> Highly motivated. Um, and information like that. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I would say it's acetherace.com, and you can also, well, you'll, you, she'll give you all the connections there. Um, and in the last few seconds, do you believe we only have seconds left? I just want to really say that Lisa is, is one inspirational because all of the stuff she's talking about, she's already been through it, and she's or she's going through it. And what she's doing is sharing her knowledge. So I am so thrilled that you finally got on Coach World TV and shared it with everybody out there. So thank you for being thank you very my much. guest. And maybe the next time we won't have to wait four or five years. Definitely not. I really appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you.